Earlier today, fans were on their feet for the Pena Bureau Valley game. Pena's Justin Schrake and Jake Sinclair combined for 44 points to lead their team past Bureau Valley in a close semifinal game, the final 66 to 59. And then the game between Westmont and Pinkyville. Well, Westmont's Pierre Pierce scored 42 points, but it wasn't enough to stop Pinckneyville's balanced scoring attack. The Panthers win it 77 to 61 to advance to the state title against Pena for the Class A state title for 2001. Welcome back. It's a sold out Carver Arena in Peoria for the IHSA Boys Class A State Basketball Championship game. The Panthers of Pinckneyville take on the Panthers of Pena. Two teams that met up in 1988 for a state title. Pena winning the game with their head coach at that time, Charles Strasberger. This time, Gary Boker is hoping to lead his team to a state title 13 years later. For Pickneyville, they're looking for a third state title. It would be the second one under head coach Dick Korn. So if you can hear, there's a lot of excitement happening at this arena tonight. Tonight, we will be crowning the 2001 Class A Boys State Basketball title. So for more on tonight's game, here are your announcers, Jim Albrecht and Doug Altenberger. Thanks a lot, Lisa. We don't know who it's going to be, but we know one thing. The South's going to do it again. The South is rising as far as Southern basketball is concerned. And we'll start with Pena and their road to Peoria, Doug Altenberger. Pena has had to work their tails off to get into this championship game, and they've done it both ways. Yeah, they won it against Farmington behind the three-point line. But then today against Bureau Valley, they won it. They're playing their game, rebounding defense in the last second half. They won it with pure just desire and heart. If you want to see a purely balanced basketball team with great fundamental skills, then you want to watch Pinkyville because uh, they have destroyed their competition down here. And the key for them has been Bowersacks. This guy has just played, played tremendous defense, and defense is what led Pinckneyville here to, to Peoria for tonight's championship game. If you want to take the ball away from Pinckneyville, you don't get it out of the hands of Jake Sinclair. He sets the table with the assist, and this afternoon he had 22 big points to add it up. And what he was, he was a nice call calming influence out there. Even when they got behind in the fourth quarter against Bureau Valley, he stayed calm, got him back in the game, and he hit clutch free throws down the stretch. And he's done in that night out, night out for Pena. And as I said, Pinkneyville has a lot of fine players, but Mr. Bowersax is what his coach calls the best player in Southern Illinois, which is quite a compliment. Well, what I liked about him is not his offensive skill, is his defense. Against Pierre Pierce in the first half of that game, he just shut him down in Westmont really struggled offensively. So not only give that offensive production, but he gives you that defensive, and that's what Dick Korn is looking for. If Pena is going to pull off another state championship, the dynamic duo from outside will have to be here again tonight. And of course, uh, we're talking about Mr. Schrake, who has 95 points in three games, and the aforementioned Sinclair. Well, he's explosive. There's no question about it. And he's a guy you see Pena Schrake. They need to get him going offensively. Crash the boards. They out-rebounded a bigger Bureau Valley earlier today, and they've got to get production from Ellen, Evan, Evans and the rest of the guys. Yes, they will, and they'll all be pumped up. And of course, who's got the most gas left in their tanking game, too? Well, Pinkneyville, of course, better come out and play that solid perimeter D to start with. And that's what that's the key for them. And get the ball inside. That's a key for them to be successful for tonight. It's the best show in Class A basketball. It's coming up after these local messages. <laughs>
Hebron gets the board as Phil Judson gathers that ball in coming down off the basket. Hey, Don Wilbrand all alone, and as he goes underneath there, Bruce Brothers fouls him, and that fouls Brothers out. Bruce Brothers is out of the ball game, and that is a heartbreaking loss for Quincy. And of course, heartbreak and the top of the mountain are what we're going to see tonight. Well, let's find out who makes up these championship rosters from Pena and Pinkneyville. Let's go to our PA announcer. Peoria, welcome to America's Original March Madness for tonight's Class A championship game here in Carver Arena featuring the Panthers of Pena, 29 and 4, and the Pinkneyville Panthers, 30 and 4. At this time, we ask you to please stand and to honor America, address the flag with your hand over your heart, remove your caps, says Dan Ream, a student at Macomb High School, leads us in our national anthem. What so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. All the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the And now let's meet the starting lineups for the Class A Championship of 2001. At a forward for Pena, a 5'10 senior, number 21, Brian McMillan. At a forward for Pinkneyville, a 6'3 senior, number 22, Haven Hicks. The other paint of forward is 6'3", senior, number 32, J.I. McDowell. The other forward for Pinkneyville is 6'3", senior, number 54, Cody Majewski. At center for paint is 6'5", junior, 33, Josh Evans. At center for Pinkneyville, a 6'5 senior, 33, Tim Bowersax. <laughs> At a guard for Pena, a 6'1 junior, 23, Justin Strait. <laughs> At a guard for Pinkneyville, a 5'9 senior, 14, Josh Fisher. <laughs> the other guard for Pena, a six-foot senior, number 24, Jake Sinclair. The other guard for Pinkneyville, a six-foot senior, number 20, Kyle Smith. Coaching the Pena Panthers in his second season, where he's 52 and 10, Gary Boker. And coaching the Pinkneyville Panthers in his 26th season, where he's 572 and 207, Dick Korn. No other state in America can claim the rich history and tradition that's been generated by Mike. I was talking with that man, Dick Korn, moments before the introduction of the lineups, and I asked him, do you ever get used to this? Obviously, this is your third state championship game. He said, oh, no. He was sitting all the way at the end of the bench, alone with his thoughts. There, of course, the Pena Panthers, Shrake and Sinclair. They have been lighting it up. McMillan, McDowell, and the rest. And now, of course, uh, you look at Pinckneyville, and uh, we, we mentioned Bowersax, and he is a load, and Majeski, or my 
Miaski, I should say, has a load inside as well. And uh, the inside game will be interesting to see how that plays out tonight. Well, and uh, one thing about uh, Pickneyville, they're not a great outside shooting team. There you see 1988, Hannah coming up with a victory. And Dick Corner would like to forget about that one. So have a little revenge factor for the coach here for Pickneyville. Well, you got to figure that... Uh, the Pinkleyville Panthers he has on the floor right now were all of about eh, three years old back then, so <laughs> I don't think they're going to be dealing with any negative energy at this point. I'm Jim Albrecht, former Illini guard Doug Altenberger, alongside, and we hope you're ready for another champion to be crowned in Peoria in the Class A basketball tournament as more history is made in Illinois on the hardwood. Out front, it's Fisher with the basketball. He's number 14. Won't shoot a lot, six points per game, but he will penetrate like that, go up to the hole and get it. Well, Josh Fisher starts off in good shape. J.I. McDowell with the basketball did such a great job this afternoon against Ruben Slock, the All-Stater. McMillan wants three, doesn't get what he wants, and the rebound comes down to Myaski. I talked with my ASCII's mom in the elevator. She said if I didn't pronounce it right, it'd be my ASCII. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see right now, Payton coming out with a real solid defense. Now allowing Pickneyville to penetrate inside, and they want to get everything from the outside for Pickneyville. Nothing on in the, in the paint. Make them earn it. They go inside, and that's my ASCII, and he'll go to the free throw line. Looks like a foul on J.I. McDowell. And again, if you see Pena fall behind, please don't leave the living room and go somewhere else because uh, this team was down by nine against a very good Bureau Valley team rated number two in the state with just six minutes left to go today, and they ran the table. Yeah, and the head coach for Pena, Gary Broker, he, he knows that. And they want to shorten this game, take some time off the clock, did like they did against Bureau Valley. Even though if they get down eight or nine, don't panic, and then let their guards take over in that fourth quarter. Myaski with the pair. And up comes Jake Sinclair. Of course, Shrake, as I mentioned, over 31 points per game in this state tournament. We'll go to the free throw line. Now, if you're looking for a family tree that uh, has a lot of points on it, this man's on it. Justin Shrake's father, Joey, played for Pena back in 1981, made it all the way to the Elite Eight, but his son has done him a couple of games better. He sure has. I mean, he is a pure, they call him about pure shooters. This guy is as pure as they get. You saw a shot of Dick Horn there, and uh, when I say he's a fundamentalist, I'm not talking about his religion. I mean, when he runs a practice, it's two hours of drill, drill, drill. He wants his team to work together and be cohesive, and when Pinckneyville wins, as they often do, it's because of the five-man effort, not a one-man effort. Gonna skip pass. They don't want the shot, but Hicks does, and he won't get it. Haven Hicks, the only left-handed shooter out on the court right now. Nice pass down inside, and Josh Evans gets the glass, and we're tied at four. And that's the series that Painter wants. Outside shot, then push it up with Sinclair. Great run in the court by Evans. Fisher, nowhere to go there. And he makes a bad pass, but fortunately for him, it was touched last by J.I. McDowell for Painter. And they'll inbound underneath their own basket. Of course, we have a pair of Panthers out here tonight, so you won't hear me saying Panthers because both teams are nicknamed the same. Myaski makes a pass. It's batted away by Sinclair, but not saved. And, of course, it's a kind of a miracle that Myaski is even here because he suffered a very serious shoulder injury earlier, and he uh, apparently is a fast healer. I heard that his doctor said when he put him out and put him under, he could actually remove the shoulder just from the socket because it was so loose. There is my ASCII, but he won't get it to fall. Well, he's a physical guy weighing almost 200 pounds, and you know he's got the body to bang, and Evans has given up about 35 pounds, so he's going to try to take advantage of use his strength in the pain area. And his mother told me that uh, he turned an ankle earlier in the year, and it was a pretty bad sprain. And took him to the first doctor and he said I think it's broken and she said oh no no it's not <laughs> no 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 we just got over the shoulder injury and of course it wasn't broken and Pinkneyville was glad about that one of two rebound comes down and clearing it out is Sinclair 
This is the guy you want to watch, ladies and gentlemen. He will control the tempo of the game, number 24. Schrake is their three-point expert. And guess who's on him? Bauer Sachs. Yep. And they put their best guy on him. Nice little pass across the lane. Oh. Put a block in there. And Doug Altenberger has a save. Still got the hands, don't you? Never lose it. It's all about the South now. Of course, uh, Pinckneyville, the far, far southern reaches. You talk to a Pinckneyville fan, you already know you're talking to them because of that drawl they have. <laughs> See, they think we talk funny. That's right. Fisher. An interior pass is contested, and they've got the numbers. It's Sinclair with a bounce pass. And that is two for Justin Shrake. Yeah, give credit for McDowell defensively getting it in the passing lane, denying the ball to Bauer Sacks. Pena with the lead, 6-5. Kyle Smith, number 20, doesn't shoot a lot. This guy will penetrate again. Fisher off the glass. Josh Fisher, a little senior out there. Yeah, like you said, not much of a score, but takes what the defense gives them and again slash into the bucket. Again for another for a basket. Brian McMillan passes it out front and they'll go around the horn. Sinclair will hang and come up far, far short. And Myaski has the rebound, cleared it out to Bauer Sachs. It won't go. The ball is tipped out, and here comes Pena. Well, that was a golden opportunity for Pinckneyville, but they couldn't close. McMillan, that's going to be way off the mark. And out comes Haven Hicks. Hicks leads the team in assist, and that's why. Over to Bowersax. Now, now Bowersax gives you great defense, runs the court, great hands there, goes up in traffic, able to finish that off. And, of course, we mentioned the three-point shooting prowess of this team. They're straight way outside, too much iron, and that's coming out of bounds. They've hit 16 threes, Pena has. In the first two games, we'll come back and tell you how Pickneyville has done from that stripe after this on the IHSA TV network. This IHSA broadcast is brought to you by Country Insurance, real people, real answers, and I mean real quick, and by the Midwest Dairy Association. On behalf of your local dairy farmers, ah, the power of cheese. the fancy of every basketball fan in and out of the state of Illinois. They just don't believe that anything as small as Hebron could produce anything as big in the figurative sense of the word as well as the literal as this basketball club. 1952. I remember that because uh, I, was, uh, I was being given a bottle back then by my <laughs> mother as we watched the IHSA television network and all the great basketball that's been played in this state. 60% from the field for Pinckneyville and only about 29% for Pena, but it's early. Yeah, it sure is. Um, even though uh, Pena's down by three, the guy feel pretty good, like you said, shooting only 27, 29% from the field. And again, their defense is what's going to keep them in this game, get it down to the fourth quarter. Steve Carroll in the ball game for Pena wearing number 20. Payne, it drops back, and that skip pass goes over to Smith. Too much iron there, but the rebound comes out, and now Bauer Sachs will take over and get it to Myaski, who floats but got a little too close underneath. And here comes Payne with the save by McDowell. Sinclair in a hurry. Don't give him that angle. I think he might have walked, and he did. Good defense by Pickneyville to get back. Payne had the numbers, but the white jerseys for good effort getting to the level of the basketball. Dick Korn is very honest in his assessment of this team. He says it's not as deep as his 1994 state championship team. Not as big. Not as talented. Of course, they were led by Shane Hawkins. And Shane, here's a pass down low to Myaski. He should finish and does. Yeah, Myaski really showing the strength against Josh Evans. Evans doesn't have that upper body strength. Really having a hard time pushing him out of the block. Yeah, Evans losing about 40 pounds in that <laughs> battle. Here's the back door play, but good defense again, but no call. As Shrake tries to get it, and he gets it taken away. Up in a hurry, Myaski will wait. And he does so, a nice feed, and that is not going to count a charge. They're going to call Bauer Sachs with the charge. And they, 
Again, McDowell coming over, making those key plays, the little things that add up for Pena. He takes that charge and the basket away. And of course, losing basketball games, trying to win a state championship, all very important. But that young man you just saw there, Mr. Bowersex, lost his mother to cancer earlier this season. So he plays with a heavy heart and maybe a mission to complete. Hanging is Evans. That won't go. Rebound to Shrake. He'll turn around and set it up. Pena does this. They'll go quiet for three, four minutes. Not look like they're getting anything done, and then wham. Pass down low to Shrake. Turn around off the glass. Couldn't get it too hard. And again, we're talking about the second game of the day, and sometimes the shooter's legs probably aren't what they were in the first. Pena has gone three minutes now without finding the bottom of the net. Haven Hicks is their best three-point shooter, but he is also, as I said, their best assist man, and Bauer Sachs is the recipient of that assist. That does a nice job again of establishing himself down low, and Pickneyville early on here in the first quarter have a lot of success in the paint area. Carroll didn't want that shot. Evans wants the follow and gets it. And Dick Korn pounds that right foot on the floor. You can hear it all the way over here. And got to get to that weak side, block out, seal down low, and Evans, no one did it. He was able to get an easy putback. Pinkneyville's run is 8-2 right now. Their lead is 5 at 13 to 8. Inside it goes. Nice pass across the lane. And you know, my ask he's going to make those all night if somebody does in front of him. Yeah, he's just having his way in, in the paint area right now. There's nobody he can stop him. Got to make some adjustments if they're paying A minute remaining here in the first quarter. There is no Class A basketball the rest of this season after tonight. Shrake forces one. Hits oh, it. Right in front of us, too. I mean, we had the perfect angle, Jim. There was nothing. The rotation, everything looked like a field goal up and good. 95 threes on the year now for Justin Shrake. Myaski a little bit outside of his range, but the follow is not good. Oh, Kyle Smith would like to have that one back. And here's Pena in a hurry. Shrake faking, gets it back out to his running mate, Jake Sinclair, and they might hold here for one shot, and they will with 35 seconds remaining. And they're down only by four, which isn't bad considering their shooting percentage, as we said before. Here's a bad pass on the wing. Here goes Haven Hicks all the way down across the lane to Fisher. Too hard, but a five. There was a, just an example of now not coming back to the pass. Got a little tired playing defense on Bowersax, and it shows. You see him tugging on his jerseys right there, and good defense by Bowersax, able to get in that passing lane and create a turnover. And then he throws the dish to Fisher. And Fisher really coming, playing, coming to, looking to play offensively, come out here and uh, really looking good in the first quarter. He's a pretty good free throw shooter, but uh, not on that particular attempt. 75% on the year. Some fresh bodies in for Pinckneyville. Jason Hoagland in the ball game. We'll spot the other ones for you. Darren McCombs also in the ball game. And it looks like uh, Michael McConaughey also came in, number 42. Let's see. Yes, that is correct. So three fresh bodies in for Coach Dick Korn whose lead is five, with the final seconds of the first quarter ticking down in the Class A state championship game from the Peoria Civic Center, which, by the way, is sold out. 11,700 are in attendance tonight. And McMillan's having a hard time finding somebody. It's Pee Wee. No, not going to be there. Our favorite nickname, Troy Pinkston, number 15. Comes up shy at the end of a quarter. It's 16-11 Pinckneyville for the crown. We're back after these local messages. Back to the boys' IHSA Class A State Basketball Championship game. Pinckneyville right now in the lead, 16 11 to Pena and next to me is the athletic director from Pinckneyville. It's Gary Glenzy. He's been the AD there now for 28 years but fascinating enough back in 1988 you were the assistant coach under Dick Horn. It was uh, a great experience. We played a super game that morning and that afternoon that night we were really drained but 
uh, it was an experience I know our kids have talked about and then coming back in 94 and then back tonight it's just been a great experience and this is just something that has been great for you overall with the preparation and so forth from the fans you're right thank you coach thank you very much back to you Jim that <laughs> shot didn't look like it should have gone down but it did and McDowell has brought his team back to within three we've got a whistle at the other end as bodies hit the deck See, there's one thing about Pickneyville. They don't shoot very well from behind the three-point line, only 30%. And it's very important for Payne to get back defensively, don't turn the ball over, because when they do those two things, it allows Pickneyville to get into that transition game and then get those easy buckets. Their best marksman from beyond the arc is Haven Hicks, number 22. He had 54 threes coming in. Smith with that skip pass. We had a couple of sophomores in there, and that's Mr. Hicks as advertised with the three. Fisher getting set to check back in, as is Myaski for Pinckneyville, whose lead is back to six. Sinclair pulls up and nails it. And you can see those guys starting, you know, they almost let the game come to them, get the feel in the first quarter, what's going on. And then Sinclair starts to take over slowly but surely as he gets towards the fourth quarter. And Doug, as you mentioned, even when they trailed today against Bureau Valley, they, they didn't act like a team that was in any kind of desperate mood. Pinkneyville grabs the offensive glass. Hoagland's pass inside is coming back the other way. And there they did a good job. Ball goes into Bowersax. There's about three blue jerseys all over him. Nowhere for him to go. Tough entry pass. And that's what they've got to continue to do. Really drop inside as soon as that ball goes into the interior. You saw Jason Hoagland checking out along with Michael Monarchy. Monarchy, the sophomore, Hoagland, the junior. They'll be back. And of course, Myaski is back in the game. Here's McDowell with a three. That would have been big for them. It's bounding around and coming out of there with it is Fisher. He's just back in the ball game. 6.25 remaining here in the first half. Four points separate these two. The team with the ball has the edge. Myaski, power man, will kick it on out. Smith didn't want it. Now he does. No. Sinclair can do everything. He can dish. He can go to the glass and pick up the rebound like he just did there. Ooh, McDowell thought better of it. Goes inside. Here's Shrek. And we've got a foul against Pinkleyville. Yeah, a lot of times you see Shrek shoot that shot. You think that's a bad shot, but more often than not, he makes that shot. It's one of those where he gets the green light from his head coach, Gary Bowker, and he can shoot it whenever he wants. And when he gets going, I mean, it's, they come in a hurry, like you said, in a bunch. Here's a feed inside. Oh, McMillan missed that easy one. He could have cut the lead to two, but didn't do it. You saw Troy Pinkston head out of there as Josh Evans replaced him for the Painted Panthers. They're giving him that outside shot. Smith doesn't want to take it. Well, McDowell really working hard on Bauer Shanks right there. A battle going on in those two. Yeah, they're looking to get it inside. Now, Myaski says, what do you mean, Mr. Play by player man, that's out of my range? I can take a three? Ooh, you're telling me where I can shoot. That's right. He takes it upstairs. Sinclair hanging from 12. That won't go. Rebound is fought for. That's going to be a foul on Evans, and the momentum is now resting on the Pinkneyville bench. They have a seven-point lead in the basketball. And you think of Josh Evans. He's six foot six. He's having a hard time staying up with Myaski inside. Then Myaski makes the adjustments, goes outside, and drops down the three. You got all this experience on Pinkneyville. You've got five seniors in the starting lineup. A couple of juniors in that lineup for Pena. Field goals right now. Three-point field goals. I'm just checking the stats. They're not too good. Oh, there's another bomb. And this one by Haven Hicks, his second of the night. And Payne has got to call a timeout because they're staring at a double-digit deficit. We're going to come back and see if they can come back after this on the IHSA TV network. There you see the tale of the two cities. And I'll tell you one thing while you look at those numbers, uh, if there is a 
trophy for playing in a conference with the longest title. Paytonville's already got it. The Southern Illinois River to River Mississippi Conference. Ooh, that is a long title. I don't know how they put that on the on the hardware. Well, they're making their conference proud tonight so far with 4.53 remaining and Payne going cold again. They haven't scored the last 2.16 and a couple of bombs, one from Miaski and the other from Haven Hicks, his second three-pointer of the night. And suddenly it's a 10-point deficit. But let me remind you, Payne doesn't have a panic button. Haven't seen it yet. Sinclair will wait. And of course, Pinckneyville is well schooled in the basics of defense. They don't let too many people go back door on them. Here's Sinclair hanging and hitting off the glass. And he'll go to the free throw line. When they need it, Sinclair's got it. And Fisher will pick up the foul. Yeah, and Fisher, I was just about ready to say, he's played some really terrific defense controlling Sinclair. And then Sinclair, after that timeout, just comes out, posts him up. And that's what they need to do. Get him, if, it, if Fisher's going to guard him, Get Sinclair down low where he can do some damage on the short official. The team that's not supposed to be good at shooting threes is three of six tonight. The team that is is one of seven from beyond the arc. Here's Fisher again penetrating. Nobody's going to stop him. That is offense from a, an unusual source for Pinkney Bill. I'm sure Dick Korn is used to it. Hey, what he's doing is, if nobody's going to stop me, I'm going to keep going. Here's the outlet pass, and it's saved nicely over there by Bauer Sacks. I don't think Hicks ever saw the ball hit him in the back. Here's Fisher oh, again. Oh. He's putting on a show. Gosh, Josh, what's up with that? He says, I should have been on that All-State team selection. Biggest lead of the night is 11 for Pinckneyville. Shrake has yet to get on track because Bauer Sacks is all over him. Here comes a three on one. Getting it over to the other side to Fisher. We've got a blocking foul against Pena. And right now, Pena just can't find the rim. And Pinckneyville's pressing him. Well, pushing it up when you look at Pinckneyville, you think of Bauer Sacks. And, but Myaski's got 10 points, and Fisher's going for double digits here in the second and in the first half already. So. Two of the guys that they don't look to for too much scoring have really stepped up. Of course, you look at Dick Horn, and uh, that look tells you that it's not easy being where he is. Of course, he's lost one, being in the final, to Pena, and then he's 1-1, beating Eureka. And now he's here to see if he'll be 2-1 and one or 1-2. One and two. A lot of people don't even have those numbers in, in that category. And he puts, I'm sure, being the type of coach that he has expectations, and he wants to win another state championship, so under a lot of pressure. A dozen points separates these two teams. And Pinckneyville is just denying Pena their three-point stroke. He's jumping out and extending the offense. So Shrake is going to try to hang and hit from 11, and that's too hard. And Pinckneyville owns the rebound again as Haven Hicks comes down with it. It's all Panthers from Pinckneyville right now. Well, Pinckneyville really putting on a clinic defensively. Great defense. One shot for Pena and out. Here's Hicks again. Oh. Three threes for Hicks who looks at his bench and smiles a little bit. Well, Pena's been down in this tournament, but they haven't been down by 15. And right now, Pinckneyville going for the jugular vein. And they create the turnover out front. All alone is Bauer Sacks. He missed the jam. But they get the rebound back. Hicks goes right back down low. And out front, it's Myaski. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Timeout, Pena. There's a big mountain staring at him now. They're down 18, just like that. And they took the page right out of Pena's notebook. I mean, they're just nailing the threes from the perimeter. Not typically not a very good outside shooting team. What I mean by that is shooting below 30% behind the three-point arc. But these guys have just stepped up and they have played a perfect, I mean a perfect first half of basketball. I mean, defensively, they have done everything right, holding Pena to 33%, out rebounding them. I mean, they're just forcing turnovers. I mean, they've made uh, Pena look like uh, I mean, really struggling out there. And, and give it all the credit to their defense. Pena has six turnovers. They are 7 of 21 
from the field. That includes one of seven from the three-point strike. And Pinckney has ran off 20 points here in the first six minutes. Of course, uh, we talk about head coach Merrill Thomas. Uh, the gym that Pinckneyville plays in is named after Duster. And, of course, uh, look at all the things that he did as far as putting Pinckneyville basketball on the map. And when you talk to guys like Tim Bowersax, he says, hey, when I was a kid, I heard all about Duster. I knew who he was. And as a matter of fact, when Dick Korn came to take over as the head coach, he made sure he spent a lot of hours with the man, and they exchanged a lot of notes. Uh, you can see it, it definitely paid off. I mean, these guys... Uh, are very precise, fundamentally sound. And what I love about this team is defensively, they just get after you. And, of course, you want your team to come out hot in the championship game. And, uh, well, I think hot is uh, not selling them properly. Sinclair really needs it. He's short. And I think we're going to have an over-the-back foul on McDowell, and we do. Getting to those stats, 59% from the field now for Pinckneyville. Three-pointers, 62%. And free throws, 62%. So... I guess I could improve in one area on those free throws. That's and you can it. see Sinclair struggling a little bit. Those legs aren't quite what they were earlier today. He's pulled up on some on some jump shots, and they have been contested, you know, with Bauer Sachs and Hicks, both those guys 6'5", 6'4", so they've got the height and the wingspan to make Sinclair and Schrake try to shoot over the top of them. Hicks, a 68% free throw shooter, doesn't get it, and we've got a whistle and a foul with 2.04 remaining here in the first half of play in Pickneyville trying to assert itself in such a way that the second half will be a new point. Of course, Pena won't think that way, but uh, they're going to have to bring on, if not the threes, they just got to solve this defense because Pinckneyville is denying everything they want to do. Yeah, I mean, Fisher has done a great job on Sinclair. Sinclair trying to make something happen, but Fisher's been able to keep him in front of him. That's what you want to do against a great point guard like him. Almost turned it over out there. Look at Fisher's diving. Here's another steal. Oh, the foul. The foul on Smith. There's Bowersack staying with him. And then, then you talked about the great defense. Smith comes over, almost gets the steal. But that's what happens. When your guy gets broken down, you look for that help. And the pick me bill every time someone gets beat, there's another white jersey to help out. Shrake is open, and he does not hit it. And the rebound comes down to Pinkney Bill. Right now, Sinclair must feel like a mailman in a neighborhood full of bad dogs. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, not a pleasant thought. And here comes a steal the other way. Steve Carroll. Needs some magic. Will it be there for Shrake? In and out. Boy, they needed that one, and they got a tough break. And when you get down by 18, now conditioning comes a part of it, stamina. You can maybe get back to the tie, but then can you keep it? You know, can, then, can you stay up there with Pickneyville? Here's Fisher in a good foul that time because uh, he was on his way for an easy two. Pena, that's their eighth team foul, so Fisher will go to the line for a one and one, and you make a good point. When you get behind that early, that much. Well, you look at look at all Pena. All those guys are got their their hands are on the on the trunks. They're doubled up a little bit, breathing hard. And this guy Fisher, I don't know what he took at halftime. I mean, this afternoon, but he's come out. And he looks really fresh. He must have went to that famous rib joint in Peoria. <laughs> yeah. Or either there took some power aid. I mean, this guy <laughs> is really, I mean. He's really kind of, he's that, you can't qualify him as the difference. But hey, you get 12 points from a guard who averages six and the defensive effort right. that he's putting on. Mr. Sinclair, it's huge. McDowell can't get it. They just can't hit a three. They are one of ten from the three-point strike. One of ten. Well, you know what they say, live by the three, die by the three. And here's a drive and a hit by Kyle Smith. And the lead extends to 22 points. Almost unheard of in a state championship game. Down low to Sinclair, fade away, tough shot, won't get it. I mean, there's a lid down there, and somebody's open all the way down the court. Bowersack saves it, and they'll hold for one. Dick Korn says one, and when Dick Korn says one, believe me, there will be just one. Sitting right next to us on the bench in Pinckneyville is Ryan Brown. You might remember Ryan. He sank the shot that won the state championship for Dick Corn and Pinckneyville. Here's a rebound up and in by Bowersack. 
strip sacks, and that's the way the first half comes to a close. Man, oh man, that is dominance. You couldn't do anything more perfectly than Pinckneyville. You couldn't do much more wrong than Pena. They just couldn't get it to fall. Yeah, Pinckneyville, I mean, a perfect half of basketball. Defensively, did everything right here on the glass. Out-rebounding Pena big time in the first half. Bowersacks finishes it off. I'm here with Coach Cord and Coach. Basically, you guys stopped their under uh, their scoring game altogether from the inside, and basically your shooters did all the work from the perimeter to give you this big lead. Well, yeah, I think our defense has been very important so far, and and that they're not getting a lot of clean looks, and then. Yeah, we've made some threes that's kind of propelled this run, but also we've gotten out and ran the floor and got some transition, too. So we've scored in a lot of different ways, uh, dribble drive, post, and uh, right now we're pretty hard to guard, but our defense is really is what has fed us and uh, got us out to this lead. Absolutely. Thanks very much, Coach. Right now, Pinckneyville in the lead by 24 points. Back to you, Jim. I think Dick Corn hit on the perfect bumper sticker if Pinkneyville wins this thing. We're hard to guard. <laughs> You'll see it on a lot of Pinkneyville cars. We're back with our halftime statistics and more after these local messages. Man, Pinkneyville all over Pena. We are back at the Peoria Civic Center. I'm Jamal Brecht along with Doug Altenberger. And let's go to the presentation of the first hardware of the day, the third and fourth place trophies. Collins of Monmouth, Division 6. Mike Hawkins of Lexington, Division 5. Pat Sullivan of Roxana, Division 7. Treasurer Greg Bradley of Mount Zion, Division 5. Emmett Aubrey of Geneseo Darnall, Division 4, and Rena Talbert of Fairfield at Large. At this time, please meet the Sentinels of Westmont, who finished fourth in the year 2001 with a record of 28 and 5. The principal of Westmont High School, Jay Sabatino. Athletic Director, Mike McCord. Head Coach, Craig Etheridge. Assistant Coach, Ron Gunter. Assistant Coach, Mike Filippini. Assistant Coach, Brian Waterman. Here. Manager, Mike O. And here are the Sentinels players. Number 52, Tonio Canerum. Number 50, Matt Wenig. Forty-four. Tony Jed. Forty two, Jody Urbis. Thirty three, Adam Hardy. Thirty two, Brian Mazuski. Thirty one, Brett Ledazinski. 30, Steve Larson. 23, Matt Forsley. 21, Brandon Stedman. Number 20, Nick Laromatis. Twenty-one, Mike Del Preto. Number 10, Thomas Frawley. Number 5, Jason Verbeck. And number 3, Pierre Pierce. Westmont Sentinels, fourth place, 2001, Class A. 
At this time, please meet the storm of Bureau Valley, who finished the year in third place with a record of 33 and 2. The principal and athletic director of Bureau Valley High School, Terry Gutshaw. Assistant principal, Robert Haskell. Head coach, Brad Bickett. <laughs> Assistant coach, Brett Helms. <laughs> Assistant coach, Jason Stabler. <laughs> Assistant coach, Nick Hartz. <laughs> and now the players. Number four, Ruben Slot. <laughs> Number 12. Adam Gutschall. <laughs> Number 14, Mike Jizalowski. Number 20, John Elliott. 22, Chad Deaver. 24, Brad Bowman. 30, Jack Priestett. 32, Phil Endress. 34, Mike Jacobs. Number 40, Nathan Koning. 42, Greg Cooley. 44, Reed Oberly. Number 50, Jim Marlowe. 52, Mike Behrens. 54, Matthew Hewitt. And the score, Roger Marquis. Congratulations to the Storm finishing third, Class A, 2001. At this time, will Craig Etheridge and the captains of Westmont step forward and receive the fourth place trophy. And at this time, will Coach Brad Bickett and the captains of Bureau Valley step forward and receive the third place trophy. Congratulations to both schools for a great season and a great effort and a great following here in the state tournament. Thank you all for being here and being so supportive. Congratulations to one and all. We're back after these local messages. and stop them, and then some one of 10 from the three-point strike for Pena. Yeah, I mean, defensively, uh, they just took apart Pena. I mean, they really struggled. You see the graphics here. I mean, field goal percentage. Pena really struggling. Pickneyville, on the other hand, over 50%. Three-point, you'd think Pena would have the strength there, but Pickneyville just beat him there, too, and then even on the free throw line. So rebounding, turnovers, the only thing good was Pena was able to I mean, even turn the ball over more than Pickneyville. Top scorers right now. Pena wishes they had a few more. They wish that was 17 for Mr. Shrake, but it's not. And of course, uh, Myaski has been good inside. Any bomb from the outside. Fisher has been phenomenal. That's uh, six points better than his average. And uh, Haven Hicks has added another nine. So right now, I don't know how Pinkyville can lose this basketball game. And I don't mean to say that in any kind of negative way, but the way they're coached, and the way they handle the basketball, they're not a turnover type team. They can create a lot. It's going to be the biggest hill Payne has ever climbed. <laughs> and defensively, they're so sound. And that's where Payne has got to try to figure it out here in the third quarter. If they don't early, then it could be a long night for them. And of course, they've played so great to get here, but they've got 16 minutes to make up the difference. We're back after these local messages. That's our score right now. Let's take a look at the highlights. Well, we've got a couple of minutes here before the second half tips off. Sinclair coming down and Evans 
finishing as Pena got off to a fairly good start. The first three minutes wasn't too bad before they caught their cold spell. Here's Sinclair pushing again. Yeah, and Shrake really sort of, I mean, he had some good looks, wasn't able to knock him down, and then it just seemed like Pitneyville started tightening their defense more and more. And Shrake, when he did hit the shots, I mean, they were tough bar sacks all over, and this was a really difficult shot for him to get off. That's the only three of the night for Pena. Let's go over to Lisa Aprati right now. Lisa? I'm here with Coach Boker, and Pickneyville's defense just shut down your inside game of the first half. Yeah, we, uh, we haven't done a good job of getting the ball inside. I think uh, part of that was on our own, uh, own behalf that we've decided, hey, I can make up an 18-point lead a lot faster by putting up some three-point shots. So we haven't been hitting them. And uh, worst of all, we didn't hit the boards very well. We didn't rebound the way we, we have the uh, last two games. So uh, that's what we were most disappointed with, is we kind of stopped hitting the boards and doing some things like that when we got down. So we talked about that at halftime, and we're hoping we'll come out and uh, put a lot for more effort for the second half. Okay, great. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. We still have the second half taking place here at the Peoria Civic Center. You're watching the IHSA Television Network. I will send it to a network break. We are set for the second half. Hope you enjoy it. If you uh, aren't rooting for either team, obviously you're rooting for a tighter contest, but hey, Pinkneyville will have none of it right now. They say domination is the way we want to win this state title. It would be their third state title in their storied career. And of course, it would return at state championship in Class A basketball to the southern part of the state. And of course, down south, they believe that's where it always belongs. <laughs> Pickneyville will start off with the basketball as if the lead wasn't enough. 24 point lead, ooh, almost 26 as Bowersax gets good position inside. And the reason I said it's almost an impossible, and nothing is impossible in sport, Doug, as you know, but it's almost impossible because with the likes of Bowersax and Miaski, I mean, there's going to be a putback here or there. You've got to exert all that effort, and uh, they're just so, they're so even. They've got senior leadership, and uh, I don't know what that inadvertent horn was all about. Well, that's one way of stopping him. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll do that next time you're putting. Yeah, I think Gary <laughs> Boker went over there and talked to him and said, can we get a little horn action when they're shooting a free throw? Well, it worked. Bauer sacks came up empty on both. And let's see if they can chip away at all. Sinclair from eight feet got it to fall. Right now, if you're painting, you just want to try to get it down within, uh, you know, down to 10 or 12 and then take it one step at a time and don't try to, like he said, don't get it back on all one shot or one pass. Same starting five. Here's Hicks way outside. I think that's exactly the kind of shot that Gary Boker would want Pinkneyville to take. Dick Corn didn't like it, I can tell well, you. That. And he doesn't have to, right? They've got the, the dominance inside. Take their time. And he said we got lucky, hit some shots on the perimeter. But the, where they're going to win this game is down in, the, down in the trenches. McMillan almost lost that five-second count. Now he gets it back and throws up a, a badly aimed shot. Bauer sacks across the lane. He goes to Kyle Smith, and that'll be worth a couple of free throws. Yeah, that's what Dick Corn wants. He wants them to pinch the defense, get that transition game going, take it to the hole, get to the free throw line. You know, painted they're they're tired right now, and you want to keep putting the pressure on them. They're in a great position. All they have to do is match basket for basket. It doesn't matter after that. There you see some of the pageantry here via the Pinckneyville cheerleaders. And it's a 24-point lead again. And it looks like a, a sea of blue, you know, all around here. They've got some great fans and really supporting this team. McDowell. And the defense just won't go away. I mean, they're certainly not going to lighten up the defensive pressure. Sinclair shakes free of his man and doesn't get the shot. Evans does. Well, that's one of the free, free looks they've had at the basket. Evans, again, able to get free. Miaski trying to help out defensively, loses him, and he gets the offensive putback. In the next six minutes, Painter will try to take 10 off the deficit for a fourth quarter. Fisher misses the lay-in. Coming out of there with it is McMillan in a hurry to Evans. He doesn't have the numbers, but he's got the drive. Josh Evans, who's had 25 points in the first three games.
Here's Hicks again. He's knocked to the floor and he'll go to the line for three. And that's a, that's a killer. Brian McMillan doing his best to defend the shot. But you don't want to knock down the three point shooter, though. Dick Korn there talking to his troops. We've got a timeout. Pinkneyville wants to regroup. He doesn't like the way they came out here in the second half. Well, I, I think he, right now he's discussing shot selection. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they got fouled on that three point attempt. But, you know, he really wants, he's pointing inside. I mean, he wants to get that ball in, in the paint area. That's where the strength of their more big, bigger and physical. And when they do, good things happen. They shooting on the perimeter. He knows that's not their strength. And, He's letting Pena off the, off the hook. Dick Korn was in command of a situation that a lot of adults would like to have. He was, <laughs> he was talking, nobody was talking back. Yeah. <laughs> Did you notice that? Well, I tell you, you know, here's a guy that's uh, been to the championship game a couple times, and he, you could tell he was ready for this game, sitting over in the corner, like yep. you said, before the game, no one around him, collecting his thoughts, staying clear and organized, and his team has really come out very, very sharp Hicks is going for the uh, I guess we would call it the free throw hat trick here but he won't get it he misses the second one discussing with himself and now his third attempt trying to put his team back up by 22 I can't believe I'm saying that yeah neither can I I mean Shrake oh yeah oh. And that was a tough shot. He had to throw somebody off with his right hand, brushed him off, and then shot the three. And there's not a lot of three-point shooters, and obviously Shrake may be the exception to the rule, but a lot of people need to get at least a second for a look, and now traveling inside on Bauer Sachs. And Bauer Sachs, he used to be purely a defensive player. When he was a sophomore, he averaged about 2.3 points per game. So what did he do? He lived in the gym, and Shane Hawkins, of course, uh, who played for Pinckneyville, had a great college career as well. His father came and worked with him 90 minutes a day, taught him moves, post-up moves, and everything else. And that's what it takes. I mean, you don't, uh, these guys spend hours and hours in the gym. Uh, it's not like all of a sudden they just showed up here by pure talent. It's also hard work. That was a flatliner from McDowell. Shrake again. Yo! Well, you never know. A 16-point deficit is better than a 22-point deficit, says Mr. Shrake with a oh. pair of bombs. We got a hurt player out oh, at midcourt. Put the level Sinclair. Sinclair got himself a pick he didn't want to deal with. And now by asking, not only does he knock out Sinclair, and not literally, thank goodness, but he uh, responds at the other end. Here's Sinclair hanging tough shot. Too much, too much glass. Look at that struggle there by McMillan. Brian McMillan will not get that one in the books because the foul occurred before the shot. That was quite the pick by Myaski. Huh? Oh, boy, I mean, you talk about the big fella putting the hurt to him. 4.16 remaining in the third quarter. We're back with more of the state championship game in Class A after these local messages. Now, Hebron's lead is only one point. Long pass down the floor to Ken Spooner. No Judson with the ball. He's been working the ball around. Bill Schultz is all alone, and he takes it. Schultz can make him when he's closely guarded. You leave him alone, and it is just making it too easy. Yesterday seems so far away, doesn't it? But of course, the memories of all the young men on the court tonight will be just as strong as the ones you just saw in our Illinois high school basketball flashbacks. And we've been bringing you those all weekend. You can see uh, that Pinckneyville has done well in all tournaments this year. Ryan Bruns, of course, uh, who made the game-winning shot for Pinkneyville the last time they won the state championship, uh, disagreeing a little bit with that call <laughs> to the right of us, saying, you have got to be kidding. I asked him before the game, so, uh, Ryan, you want another last-second shot to win it? He said, no, I'd, I'd prefer a big spread, thank you. <laughs> well, right now, their defense is just taking care of business right now. They're just getting after it. Sinclair, a little drop pass, and 
It gets away from Evans, and now Pinkyville with the numbers. Three on one, count them up. Mr. Myaski's having himself a night. 17 points for the senior. I'd hate to play football against him. I'll yeah, tell you he, that. he is a tough-looking dude right there. He's been throwing his body around and delivering some pain. Sinclair will go the other side. And again, it's just kind of matching points here. 50-32. Pinckneyville came out and just shut down Pena. And now they go the other way to Smith. He'll hang, come up short, put it back in. Tough play by the senior. And when you get down by 20, that's what will kill you. Ooh, a pass was headed up court to Bauer Sachs. Now he'll look across court. He'll find Hicks, and Hicks will find the free throw line. Again, it's that defense the Panthers picking Bill Panthers have got that really forcing the turnovers and really in transition is where they are very effective. I haven't seen a team all year that really runs the fast break like these guys. They always make good decisions. Seems that uh, they always get the ball to the hoop looking, trying to finish it. If they don't get it, at least they get to the free throw line. Dick Korn likes to say that all the work we do all week long, it's fun to see if it's come to fruition on Friday and Saturday night. That's what they're working for. He, he basically is the ultimate practice coach, and most coaches who are good at practice get pretty good results well, if they've you, got the talent. You can really see it. I mean, you talk about making good decisions on the run in the transition game, and whether it's Hicks, Smith, Fisher, or Myaski, all those guys really can handle a basketball in transition. Well, Strake tried to shake things up with a couple of bombs, but it's still back to a 22-point lead as Sinclair draws the foul on the drive. And it seems like every time even Payne gets a good look, they, there's another white jersey helping out defensively. I mean, these guys, we talk about help and recovery. Even though they get burned, there's someone else always there to help out. Evans contested by two defenders, comes up way short. Fisher running the floor. Looks to the corner for Smith. And they'll just re-crank up the offense. Fisher draws double coverage, which leaves Hicks open. Haven Hicks. This is a haven for him, isn't it? <laughs> oh, he's got a nice release, the big left-hander. The biggest lead of the game is 25, and a whistle will halt play as Sinclair drives. And your heart goes out to pain him because they at least wanted to be in this game. Nobody wants to get blown out. Not in the biggest show in town, but so goes sport. Well, well Jim, we talked about it before the, the start of this game. You mentioned, you know, Payne got here. Really a difficult road, had a tough game against Farmington, and then an emotional game while Bill Valley, a game where I think they wanted to win but didn't expect it. And then they came here, and I think the fuel tank was a little empty for them. And, some of the shots they were making the last couple days just didn't go down. And early on, they needed to stay with this very talented Pinckneyville team. A 7-0 run for Pinckneyville is stopped by the free throw. Dick Korn. Right now, time is on his side. 2.33 remaining in the third quarter. Pinckneyville with a huge lead. Not this time for Hicks. Running is Sinclair. He'll stop. He'll pull up. And he won't. He does get it. He got the angle. And here's a man all alone, Smith, oh yeah. You see, that's what all that energy does. I mean, somebody couldn't drop back on that play, and Pinckneyville burned him. Sinclair for three. But again, we said they probably needed to get it down to 10-12 by the end of the third quarter, and it's still at 21. Well, if anybody can bring it back, it's Pena. I mean, they've got the three-point bombers. And Shrake and Sinclair and the rest of the guys. Inside, Bauer Sachs gets the roll. Bauer Sachs averaging 16 points a game, five rebounds a game, also a good assist man, came in with just under 70 on the year, and of course their best defender. And with a minute 22, Pena would like to request some more time to be put on the clock. And now they throw it away. 
and it's tough to coach this kind of game if you're a Gary Boker. I mean, you're always coaching until the last possible second, but strategy is kind of gone at this point. There's a sense of urgency. Uh, and and Pickneyville, these guys are playing like it's the first quarter, too. Very active. I mean, Bauer sacks, great footwork in, in posting up, and this guy works hard not only on the offensive end, but on the defensive end. That time, Fisher had it knocked away from behind. Sinclair will find Evans. Evans wants the lane, and he throws it off to the wing instead. Todd Byers in the ball game, wearing number 12 for Payton. There's a nice move by the aforementioned Josh Evans, who leans in and gets himself two to make it a 21-point ball game. And under the one-minute mark in the third quarter, Pickneyville will just take their sweet old time. Lyaski has battled through so many injuries. And here he is, standing tall, number 54 out there at the top of the free throw line. Don't be surprised if they go into him. Now you wouldn't know he had those injuries. He's delivered a little pain in this championship yeah. game. He dropped Sinclair with a great screen there, and fortunately Sinclair was okay. Here we go, 10 seconds remaining. There's Myaski with a drop pass, but it got away from Bauer Sachs. Now, that's exactly the play they wanted to run. It would have worked, too. And one of the few mistakes they've made in this game, those that play a two-man game, Bauer Sachs had Evans sealed on the outside, and just a tough entry pass by Myaski. And that's how bad things are going for Pena. Evans hesitated throwing the ball in, and in doing so, he stepped across the line. And I'll be darned if Pinckneyville doesn't get another final second shot here in the third quarter. Darren McCombs into the ball game. He'll inbound. Down they go low. And the turnaround by Myaski just comes out, and that's the way the third quarter will come to an end. And you can tell how competitive, competitive Jake Sinclair is. He was upset about that last play. We are back after these local messages for the final quarter. I have no idea. I can't hear a thing. Welcome back. We're in the fourth quarter. Pickneyville in the lead, 61 to 40 over Pena. And joining me is Jenny Hagan. She was a cheerleader back in 1988 for the Pena cheerleaders. Now she is the head coach. Tell me about the experience being in the 88 game as well as now coaching the 2001 squad. In 1988, I was um, thrilled to be a cheerleader for the, uh, the Pena Panthers, and we had a great time. We were able to make lots of memories. My best friend became my best friend in 1988, and we saw the whole town come together and show their school spirit. I've been the cheer coach for four years, and my main goal is for the kids to show each other school spirit, have pride in themselves, and have pride for where they come from. And it's wonderful to be in charge, to be the queen of school spirit, if you will, at PHS. We do a good job, my girls do a good job, of getting the kids to have a good time, and I hope that they're making lots of positive memories. Well, even though that uh, Pena is down right now, the cheerleaders as, as well as all the parents and the fans here are still excited at the fact that they will be second in the state, which is a great title to be able to have. Back to you, Jim. Thanks, Lisa. Inside is Josh Evans. Pena, while we were away, tried a couple of three-point bombs, but they fell short. But Josh Evans got the conventional two. And here floating in the lane is the nice touch of Tim Bowersax. And Bowersax now with 10 on the game. There's a tough shot by Shrake. And again, oh, man. I, I think that's a little frustration right there. And Shrake, of course, looks like he might have hurt a knee there coming down. And he's in pain. Well, you don't like to see that. I mean, here's a tough kid and goes down and he's holding that right knee. And away from the action, Sinclair and Bauer Sachs are shaking hands. Let's take a look and see exactly what happened here. Uh, Shrakes was trying to force one up here and then he grabbed Bauer Sachs from behind on the rebound and down he goes. Ooh, Bauer Sachs put that left knee down on the floor with his weight. And, uh, being a guy that's had three or four knee operations, uh, I, I know uh, that's something when you twist that knee and uh, you could tear some cartilage and hopefully it's just a bruise and nothing more than that. But he is definitely sh shaken up. 
Yeah, he's going to try to fight it off, but he's going to have to limp off right now. Yeah, he's really hurting. I don't know if he'll be able to come back in or not. And if he doesn't, you have not seen the last of Justin Schrake because he's only a junior. Yeah, I think he's one of the premier, you know, three-point shooters in the state. I mean, this guy can hit him from NBA three-point. Yeah. He's got, he has no, range has no limit. And no one will forget it if they were at the Decatur Super Sectional when he dropped home 10 threes in the Super Sectional victory. 45 points on the night for Shrake. And of course, if you miss the third place game, we have a new record holder in the Class A state tournament in the Class AA state tournament as well as Bauer Sachs gets another two. Pierre Pierce from Westmont dropped in a mere 159 points in four games, beating Jay Scheidler's 25-year-old record, which had stood for a very, very long time. He beat him by two, and he did it in the final minute of the consolation game. Yeah, and he is going to be a dandy. I mean, going to the Big Ten, going to Iowa, uh, when he fills in a little bit, gets a little upper body strength, and I mean, he's just put on a show here for a couple of days. It was fun to watch him. It sure was. Todd Byers playing catch with Troy Pinkston out front. Right now, Pinkstonville's just counting down to the championship. There's a pass inside, stolen away by Kyle Smith, and then taken right back by Evans, who goes up and hits it. Well, Evans really played well here in the championship game, and he's got 12 points and 7 for 10 from the field. I mean, 14 points. Well, that run that Pinkneyville put on against Pena in those first two quarters, you want to put that one in the in the film library. Yeah, that, that was textbook. I mean, technically, they did no, nothing wrong. And defensively, just no weaknesses. And you know Sinclair, he was looking for something, just couldn't see anything. There's a pass inside that Bauer Sachs wasn't quite there for, and the long baseball pass to Sinclair. Look at this athleticism. Couldn't finish it. Evans will try. Now underneath is Byers trying, and he can't buy it either, and out of there is Myaski. I would get away from him <laughs> when he's trying to clear the boards. That's team foul number six on Payton. Foul on Todd Byers. So Pinkneyville comes to the state tournament and they don't even have a close call. Yeah, I mean, they just, uh, I, they look solid. I mean, they're starting five defensively. And any of these guys can play a guy in the post or on the perimeter. I mean, uh, Myaski, he can guard anybody. Bauer Sachs, he can guard anybody. Great look back door. And Haven Hicks finishes the deed. And remember, folks, uh, you know, how a, how a state tournament finishes up you have to look back a little bit. Uh, Pleasant Plains, of course, was gunning for their second straight state title, and they get knocked off by Macomb, and then Macomb gets knocked off. And uh, things happen, and, you know, Dick Cohen said it best. We've got to have a few things go our way. We've got to catch a few breaks and uh, then play solid basketball, and that's what's happened. Well, what impresses me the most about Pickneyville is how fresh they came out. I mean, the energy level that they had, you wouldn't know they played two games in less than 24 hours. I mean, these guys look like they just rolled off the bus and ready for another one. Oh, what a pass. Down underneath the Bauer sacks. And they are having everything their way. They're stretching the lead even more. It's up to 23 points. And, and again, some people might say, well, you know, you want to play that first game Friday because that'll give you the most rest. Well, Pinkneyville caught yeah, that break, right, too. Good point, yeah. And they play early on Friday. Uh, Bauer Sachs, it's, he is so active in that pain area. You talked about him earlier in his career being more a defensive player, but he has developed as an offensive player, especially in that pain area. Has great footwork, timing, seals everybody off, and, uh, and they clear it out for him so he has area uh, room to operate. Well, if Smith makes a, another bucket here for Pinckneyville, they will have all five starters in double figures. Yeah, and you talk about balance, and I don't think anybody had more balance coming downstate than these guys. I mean, they're doing it like a total, complete team effort. Troy Pinkston makes a couple of free throws. Jack Gower was unmolested as he scored two points for Quincy. And Hebron's lead is one point. John Wilbrandt with the ball. We're in the final minute of play. And a foul is called on John Wilbrandt for giving the hit to Jack Gower. That 
can tie up the ball game. There are 50 seconds, 5 0 seconds. Ah, uh, the Hebron Classics. Of course, uh, they still talk about that in that town. And this lady, of course, will be talking about. Pinkneyville, there you see, you know that this fan of dyeing your hair blue? Yeah, I'm glad I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you talked about it. I mean, this, even though Pena's not going to win tonight, this is something that uh, the community will talk about for years and how the great team in 2001, and these kids will never forget this experience. Well, Gary Boker would have loved matching uh, Charlie Strasberger's title. But it's not going to happen tonight. If you're wondering about the largest point margin in a title game, we're not there yet. The top of us beat Ohio big time, 37 points back in 1986. And we are at 22 and make it 24 as Haven Hicks finishes. And of course, it doesn't help that Justin Shrake is on the bench nursing that injured knee. Sinclair, nope, the rebound fishing. I don't know where Sinclair will decide to go, but some small college will love to have him. Yeah, I was talking to you after uh, the afternoon session. He reminds me a lot of Jeff Hornacek, you know, who played uh, for Iowa State and then you know, had a great career with Utah Jazz, and I played against him. And just even his mannerisms, the way he's, he's big and tall enough, and he could play at the next level, you know, being about, uh, as they say, he's only six feet tall, but he, he plays more like 6'2". Fisher will exit, and he deserves a hug and then some, because he has helped Pinckneyville win another state championship. He came out and set the tone. Yeah, he sure did. He uh, made a difficult night for Sinclair, six for 15 from the field. Give all the credit to Josh Fisher. Tremendous defensive effort. And those are the first tears of the night, and they are tears of joy. They sure are. That's a special moment right there. You don't think it doesn't mean something to these guys? It's something nobody can ever take away from you, no matter where you end up. And a lot of times, when you're in competition like this, as we see more of the Pinkneyville Panthers come off the floor, there's a hand for Tim Bowersax, who has been one of the hardest working guys in Southern Illinois to get his game where it is today. And uh, guess what he's going to be holding in just about three minutes. And I'm not talking about his girlfriend, either. <laughs> I'm talking about... The championship trophy. Into the ball game now for Pena. Aaron Byers. We've also got Steve Carroll in there. And Carroll's hustling after the basketball. McMillan is still in there. And see, you know, Byers is going to tell his kids. Now, if Coach Boker would have put me in, I could have maybe helped him. I was one for one. Perfect from the field. You know, three points. Only a couple minutes of play. This game was decided at the half. Nolan Kellerman is in the ball game wearing number 24. Also with the basketball now is Shane Hoffman getting some face time on the state title game. Hoffman with a dish and we'll have a jump ball. That pass went over to Nolan Kellerman. And it's cleanup time. Now, this is great, too, for uh, a lot of the guys that uh, don't get a lot of playing time for Pickneyville. They get to play in this championship game. What a special moment for these guys. Kellerman having some problems out front. Gets rid of it. Pickneyville crowd making some noise. Well, even the guys on the bench play with a lot of discipline. If I was out there, I'd be firing a three up right now. <laughs> <laughs> Underneath, he's all alone. It's good. Jason. Hoagland, of course, Jason has seen uh, quite a few minutes this season, but uh, he gets two on the board there. We're just playing out the string, hanging and not hitting there. There's Carroll, and we'll come the other way with Pinkton. Jim Albrecht and Doug Aldenberger. Proud to have been a part of this Class A state tournament. Don't forget, March Madness is not done until, of course, Jim O'Boy, our boss, says it is. And it's not going to be done as Class A starts next Friday right here in Peoria. They're down to their Sweet 16. Some more substitutes for Pinkneyville, and we'll get them to you as soon as we can. Jared Cook is in there. 
And as I mentioned, the home of original March Madness continues with the boys' Class AA state tournaments. The action begins next Friday at noon and at 6.30 p.m. Saturday at 11 and again at 6.30. And we wish all of those combatants sweet championship dream. Yeah, my in sweet 16, my Gary Richwoods Knights are still in there. That's right. Bob Darling, the head coach there, and Willie's done a terrific job there. And Jason Hoagland trying to rack up four points here and does. And we've got a timeout, more substitutes. Jordan Sutton has come into the ball game wearing number 52. Danny Seifert is in the ball game. We're all talking Pinckneyville here. Zach Campbell in there as well. Wesley Eplin. And we don't want to look or overlook anybody. And also John Hicks. Got them all in there. Bringing the ball up for Painter right now. It's Steve Kerr. Joe Fitzpatrick is in the ball game for Carroll. He's got the basketball. He'll get it over to number 25, but that shot won't fall for Aaron Byers. Well, not much you can say, Doug Altenberger. It was all said in the first half. As we look back. We'll throw it in. Quincy down there with those players all set in the line, are setting up a screen play. And Payne is the man they tried to free as he cut around the he had to drift back, and the pass is wild, out of bounds. Hebron takes the ball out of bounds. Ten seconds left to play. Paul Johnson with the ball. A press defense against him. Don Wilbrand with the ball. He goes in, juggles the ball, can't get rid of it. Five seconds left to play. Judson lets one go in there, aim for a choke, and it's broken up. Is there time to shoot? Gower goes down there and loses the ball as it goes into overtime. Well, we were hoping we might have one of those kind of games here tonight, but Pinckneyville and Dick Horn said, no, we're, we're going to take the uh, mellow way to the state championship. Yeah, they, get took, out in front early. they took all the drama out of it. Hebron, there you see the, the Judson twins who played at Illinois, and my dad played with them down in 55 to 57, University of Illinois, and, and now Rob Judson gets the head coaching job at Northern Illinois, so the Judson family is rich in tradition with the state of Illinois. Ryan McVickers in the ball game now for Pena, wearing number 22. We want to make sure we mention his name and a travel at the other end on Jared Cook with a minute remaining here in the state championship game. No, Gary Boker's crew is not going to come away with the top of the line hardware, but number two ain't too shabby. Now, and you, you think of that team, and uh, you don't want to say overachieving because they did achieve it, but yeah, they really played well. I thought uh, they, they maxed out, and maybe, like you said, if they had another day of rest, they might have given Pickneyville a better game. They really burned up all the fuel in that great game they had against Farmington, and then, of course, this afternoon against Bureau Valley. And their Bureau Valley is so big yeah. and strong, and Ruben Slock, and they just sort of hung on there at the end to win that game. And There's your player of the game, Cody Myaski. 17 points, a solid all-around game for Pickneyville. And he got those paints, he got those points in the paint and in behind the three-point line, so he was very effective offensively. We're coming down to the final seconds of the Class A season. David Chinerski had that basketball for Pena. Now it's Andy Levin. Andy coming out front to Casper. And now down low it goes to Jared Cook, and he'll go to the free throw line with about 11 seconds remaining. And that's all right, because we get paid by the minute, don't we? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no, we're just kidding, Jim. We want to thank our director, of course, uh, and all the great ladies and gents in the truck, because uh, they make this look like the top class act that it is, our director, Frank Vance. We want to thank him. And, of course, we also want to thank the assistant executive director of the IHSA, Jim Flynn, who has helped run this tournament so smoothly, not only here, but also when it was down in Champaign. Mr. Flynn been doing this for 27 years. And of course, uh, Dave Fry, the executive director of the IHSA, and all the volunteers who, who check my pass every time I go off the court. <laughs> Here's a shot up, not there, and it is in for 
Wesley Eplin, and that's how it ends, 77 to 50, a 27 point dominating state championship victory for a very happy and celebratory Pinckneyville Panther ball club. And a relief, Dick Corn. I mean, they guys came out very calm and very effective, and they just took advantage of Pena right from the get-go, and they just hadn't that much to, to counterattack with, and from then on, it was uh, all the Pan Pinckneyville Panthers. We'll be back with more after a network break. seconds remaining in this game. Tip goes to Hebron. Paul Judson with it, dribbling down the sideline. He lets one go over to Don Wilbrand. Spooner's under the bucket. Doesn't bother to shoot, just gives it out to Paul Judson, and the foul is called on Phil Harvey. That about wraps things up for Hebron. Yes, sir. Paul Judson turns around at the free throw line and waves his hand at the rooting section. There's only five seconds left to play. There's nothing going to happen now. Hebron is the state champion of Illinois. This free throw is a formality. It's no good. Under he goes. That is no good. And there he's forgotten to recover. And look at the crowd go back. Look at that. He's just done. I'm here with Pickneyville's head coach, Dick Horn. And Coach, overall, you guys took the lead and you just ran with it. It was a complete game by all your players. Well, the second quarter was huge. I mean, we opened up a lead in the first quarter, but uh, we shot it so well in the second quarter, both inside and out. Had it, we scored about every way you could. Uh, we scored in transition. Uh, Cody and Haven made some threes. Uh, did a great job with their defense and wore them out, actually. I think they got very, very tired the last, probably the last four minutes of, of the second quarter. And you know, for all intents and purposes, the ball game was over. Now, there was a lot of focus on this game just because of what happened 13 years ago. Do you think it brought a different energy level to the game itself? Uh, no, I don't think so. You know, uh, 13 years ago, most of these kids were three and four years old. I mean, they've heard about it, but uh, they, they don't know what happened other than just the score and, and who won the ball game. And, and this is a totally different ball club, a totally different era. And No, I don't, I don't think it had any bearing whatsoever on the game. Well, Coach, congratulations on a great year. Also joining me is Cody Majewski. He had 16 points in today's game, 2001 state champs. How does it feel? Great. There's no words to explain it. None. Absolutely not. This feels great. Well, obviously, Cody, very excited, but we're going to send it back to Jim. We're talking to Pickneyville's 2001 state champions. Back to you, Jim. Doug and I are just watching uh, probably uh, the tightest embrace <laughs> in basketball as Dick Corn goes over to his wife and shares the kind of moments that, uh, you know, only a coach and a coach's wife know about. Yeah, and uh, there's a lot of hard, you know, uh, hours put in, and you don't see that on the television. These guys, you see how happy they are, and we saw that early with Hebron. I mean, those guys, I mean, they still talk about it. They'll talk about this Pickneyville team for years and years. And, of course, uh, that Hebron title game uh, back nearly 50 years ago, and the excitement, though, doesn't matter what era it is. It still feels the same, and unless you're a state champion, I don't care what you say, I don't care how close to the action you are, you don't know. You'll never know unless you win it yourself. Yeah, and that, that's the truth. I mean, these guys will always have that little special medallion that they get, and they'll always be hanging up in their room. And, of course, you see the lights dim here. That's because uh, Doug didn't pay the uh, energy bill. No, they're going to have the... Presentation, let's go out to the PA announcer as we hail the champions. Rena Talbert of Fairfield. At this time, please meet the Panthers of Pena, who finished the year 2001 in second place with a record of 29 and 5. First, let's meet the principal, John Krosky. Athletic Director, Carol Schramm. Head Coach, Gary Boker. Assistant Coach, John McDowell. 
Assistant coach, Tim Kasner. Assistant coach, John Scherzer. Student assistant, Cole Combs. And now the players, number 12, Todd Byers. Fifteen, Troy Pinkston. Twenty, Steve Carroll. Twenty-one, Brian McMillan. Twenty-two, Ryan McVickers. Twenty-three, Justin Schrake. Twenty-four, Jake Sinclair. Twenty-five, Aaron Byers. Thirty-two, J. I. McDowell. 33, Josh Evans. 40, Jared Cook. 43, David Chernisky. 44, Ryan Kasner. 50, Joe Fitzpatrick. And 55, Andy Lebon. Congratulations, the Paina Panthers finishing second the year 2001 Class A. At this time, let's meet the Panthers of Pinckneyville, who finished the season in first place with a final record of 31 and 4. The principal of Pinckneyville, Don Smith. Athletic director, Gary Glenzie. Head coach, Dick Korn. Assistant coach, Mike Cheek. Assistant coach, Wes Schoet. And assistant coach, Ryan Bruns. Scorer, Billy Ray Craig. And now, let's meet the Panthers. Number 10, Danny Seifert. Number 11, Shane Huffman. Number 12, Jason Hoagland. Number 24, Nolan Kellerman. Number 32, Zach Campbell. Number 40, John Hicks. Number 42, Michael McConaughey. Number 44, Darren McCombs. Number 50, Wes Eplin. Number 52, Jordan Sutton. Number 14, Josh Fisher. Number 20, Kyle Smith. Number 22, Haven Hicks.
Number 33, Tim Bowersax. Number 54, Cody Majewski. The Panthers of Pinckneyville, Class A state champs. And now will Coach Gary Boker and the captains of Pena step forward to receive the second place trophy. And will Coach Dick Horn and the captains of Pinckneyville step forward and receive the first place trophy. The party is on and we're back after these local messages. This broadcast has been the exclusive property of the Illinois High School Association. Any rebroadcast or reproduction of any part of this telecast without the express written permission of the Illinois High School Association is, of course, strictly prohibited. This game, folks, was over in the second quarter when Pinckneyville went on a 26-7 tear. Pena couldn't climb that mountain, and, uh, hey, Pinckneyville deserves it, and Pena knows it. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Another chapter written in the history books, and, Jim, it's uh, been just uh, been an honor to work with you and just been involved in, uh, in the, another state tournament. I hope we can do it again, Doug Altenberger, and, of course, uh, Kurt Pegler, Lisa Prati, uh, the other crew, Lee Hall and uh, Matt Taphorn, all bringing you exciting Illinois High School Association basketball, and don't forget about March Madness continuing into next weekend. They'll be back here with the big boys on Friday. That's it. For everybody on the crew, I'm Jim Albrecht. Let's have some more March Madness. See you later.